Hey everybody, it's Chris from Military Aviation History and today I'm in Linköping in Sweden visiting Saab. Now, they've put at our disposal a Gripen D. So I'm going to make this video into sort of a Gripen CD at, uh, inside the cockpit walk around. Although, of course, this is an aircraft that is being active service. So we can't actually jump inside of the aircraft and film all the bips and bobs. So instead of that, we're going to have some simulator footage of me jumping inside a simulator as a little bit of a compensation for all of you. And it's, of course, already accessible for all patrons and channel members. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer here. I was invited to Saab to film this. However, there is absolutely no transaction happening in terms of money being sent my way. This is not a sponsorship. Uh, inside the cockpit is, of course, fully funded by patrons and channel members. So with that disclaimer out of the way, as always, veterans of inside the cockpit will know first to walk around. We'll start on the nose. We'll take it around the starboard side, coming around the tail, and then we'll talk about the weapon systems being installed on Gripen C or D in, uh, on the port side. So starting up front, got a pressure sensor with some complementary vortex generators here and then in the radom we have the PS05A radar set now as Gripen has already been in service for some time there's of course certain iterations of this radar set that have come out but it's basically a multi-mode uh, pulse Doppler radar set uh, operating in the X-band and uh, the azimuth is roughly uh, plus and minus 60 degrees Coming further then, of course, we have the cockpit. The D model is a twin seater. So you, of course, see that second uh, tandem seat there. We've got the landing gear up front with one of the landing lights as well. A couple of antennas here that do their job. And now, of course, we come to the uh, engine air intake. Now, uh, Gripen CD uh, features a single RM12 that produces roughly 12,000 pounds of thrust. In afterburner, that goes up to 18,000 pounds of thrust. And uh, when it comes to, of course, all these sort of uh, stats and figures, uh, it's easy to compare to other aircraft, but of course, what you always have to do is keep in mind what are the specifications for the actual aircraft, what is the role it is intended to fill, and not just make an off the record uh, comparison there between different uh, aircraft. For example, with the Euro Canards, of course, you Typhoon and uh, Rafale were sitting at a slightly lower thrust to weight ratio, but Gripen still does its job. So um, in that sense, it's all good. We then come to the all moving canards. These are close coupled, so that means they sit slightly above and very close to the actual wings. Now they have quite a few features. First of all, uh, they can move independently from each other, but generally they move in unison. And they, of course, uh, generate vortices that then also interact with the wing vortices that re-energize the boundary layer to uh, prevent sort of that separation of the airflow from uh, going across the whole wing. As well as that, at high angles of attack, they deflect and uh, bring additional airflow over the wing. And of course, on landing, they deflect automatically to act as air brakes, giving Gripen that distinctive look when it, uh, when it lands on the ground. In Gripen, you also have a couple of fuel tanks in the spine of the aircraft. So there's five tanks there, although tank number one and tank number two are separated in four and aft compartments. So basically, you could say the spine or the center line of the aircraft has five fuel tanks. And then there's, of course, a fuel tank in the leading edge of the wing and also one additional one to the aft part of uh, the wing. Uh, looking quick briefly here in this area, uh, we've got the refueling panel as well with the refueling coupling over here. So that's where you would put it in and uh, screw tight in order to refuel the aircraft. And then we come, of course, to the actual wing, to the leading edge. Uh, we've got the full on gear in the back, of course, that retracts forward and inwards. And then on the wings, we have maneuvering flaps that do their job once required. And then we come, of course, to the wingtip launcher. Weapon systems, I'm gonna handle those on the port side. For now, what's important is forward facing uh, radar warning antenna and a rearward facing as well to provide some of that protection uh, for Gripen. Then as we come around those wingtip launchers, the elements providing the control for the pilot in order to steer the aircraft, of course, their uh, Gripen features a fly-by-wire system. So these are uh, used, or these are controlled by actuator rods with the control input coming from the pilot. Coming towards the tail then, we've got our actual air brakes that uh, sit on either side uh, on the uh, tail end of the aircraft. And of course we have a tailless aircraft, which means that uh, we have uh, 
no horizontal stabilizer and simply a vertical stabilizer. Up there we have an ILS antenna, we have a forward-facing radar warning antenna, we have another pressure sensor and so on and so forth. And I just remembered that I forgot to ex also explain that of course with the canars, uh, because Griffin features relax stability, those make automatic adjustments uh, for the pilot in order to maintain that stability for the flight. We have then the variable area nozzle exhaust towards the back. And then as we come around the aircraft towards the wing route here, we find the aircraft's APU. Gripen also features a lot of countermeasure systems in terms of chaffs and flares. So there's different uh, launcher systems that can be installed either at the, uh, well, the trailing edge of the, the, the actual pylons or that can also be installed here towards the, uh, towards the variable area on, on nozzle exhaust uh, that fire off, of course, flares and, and chaff when required. Coming then to the wingtip launcher. What we have in Gripen is basically up over here we have IR homing missiles, so air-to-air -air missiles. Uh, initially, Sweden used a lot of AIM-9, so either the RB-24 in the earlier iterations, the upgraded versions were then called RB-74. And of course, Gripen has mainly transitioned now to IRST, which is RB-98. In Sweden, the designations work the following way. RB stands for robot, which means missile and the number stands for uh, the actual version of the missile with even numbers being IR homing missiles and uneven numbers being uh, radar guided missiles. Bringing it around then to the uh, outboard, pil uh, outboard pilot and the inboard pilot. So these are of course NATO compatible even before Sweden took the decision to join NATO, by the way, welcome. Um, but on the outside, we have uh, a carrying capacity of roughly 1,300 pounds. On the inboard one, roughly 2,600 pounds. Then we have a offset centerline starboard pylon to the front of the aircraft that carries 500 pounds, but that's mainly for targeting pods or reconnaissance pods. And then we have a centerline pod in the back, mainly or in the, yeah, in the back, mainly for fuel tanks or also a recce pod. Now, Gripen features, of course, a lot of weapon systems. I can't go into all of them, but for air-to-air -air engagements, we have AMRAAM missiles like the AIM-120, that's RB-99, or we have Meteor RB-101. Before that, Sweden also used a lot of Skyflash, so RB-71. Then there's Taurus, there's anti-shipping missile, RBS-15, and so on, that can all be installed on these pylons. Of course, you can also have uh, laser-guided bombs with Pave Ray 2. You can have glide munitions, dumb drop bombs and uh, all that good stuff as well. Coming then towards the front of the aircraft, I of course uh, already pointed out the, the fact that they can have targeting pods and reconnaissance pods on the uh, outboard uh, starboard for, uh, forward pylon. But over here, not in Gripen D, but in Gripen C, we would also find a refueling pod as well as the forward fixed weaponry, which is a 20 seven millimeter uh, Mauser BK-27 cannon. You might be familiar with that cannon. It's also used on the Typhoon and on Tornado. It fires a 27 by 145 millimeter round. It's a five chamber revolver gun and has a variable fire rate of roughly 1,000 to uh, 1,700 rounds a minute. And with 120 rounds, that gives the pilot roughly seven to four seconds of fire and that would be housed well upwards from front to the front here but not installed on delta so yeah that brings us to a close on the outside of gripen i hope you enjoyed this tour a big thank you of course to the patrons and channel members who make this possible also of course to saab for in the invitation and if you want to jump inside the cockpit with me of course look out for that video uh, that we have of the full fidelity simulator filmed later on during the day so thanks very much have a great day and see you in the sky